Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the four-step process for estimating a population proportion. Up to this point, what we've had is kind of a, you know, an idea where we construct these confidence intervals and we have a sample proportion and we, we try to figure out, you know, what kind of interval can we set up to be reasonably sure that the true population proportion is in that interval. Well, there's a formal process for this and it's a four-step process. And the four-step process looks like this. It starts out with stating exactly what we're trying to figure out. So what we're going to do is we're going to state the parameter, what we're measuring, and also the confidence level. So we want to estimate the true proportion of people that own dogs in the United States at a 95% confidence level. Then what we do is we're going to lay out a plan for how to do that. So we're going to name the procedure. Let me get my colors straight here. This is what I'm going to do. Then we're going to check our conditions. Just like a construction worker has to pull their permits first, we have to see if the conditions are right for us to be able to do this process. And then we're going to do those procedures. So we want to list out the general and specific formulas. And we want to plug in the numbers. And calculate the interval. And if you think about it, all this stuff kind of follows a logical, a logical flow, right? And then at the end, we want to conclude. And when we conclude, what we're doing is we want to interpret the interval in context, which is important. And it's that prompt where we say, we are 95% confident, et cetera, et cetera. So what do we need to be able to do this? Let's divide this box here and figure out exactly what we have to do. So sometimes it comes down to figuring out working backwards and choosing a sample size. And to choose a sample size, we're going to use just the margin of error. And our margin of error, as you'll recall, is equal to z star times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. And we're going to solve for n. We're, that means in our problem that we'd be doing, we would know everything in this question. We'd know the margin of error. We'd know the confidence level. We'd know the z star. And we'd know the proportion, but we wouldn't know the sample size. And so when p hat is unknown, we want to use p hat equal to 0.5 because that's a 50-50 shot, right? Uh, and if n comes out as a decimal, we want to round up because we don't want to have a sample size that's too small. We'd rather have a sample size that was rounded up a little bit. Okay, so um, big pieces of the takeaway there is we'll know the margin of error, the margin of error, and we'll have to solve backwards to solve for n. Let's do an example, and you'll see how this works. A community activist in activist group in Austin, Texas, wanted a particular issue to be placed on the ballot of the upcoming election to make it on the ballot. Twenty thousand valid signatures were needed. The group turned in their petition with twenty four thousand five hundred ninety eight signatures. To pass the validity test, 20,000 of 24,598, 81.3 of the signatures must be valid. It is too time consuming to check all the signatures, so a random sample of signatures are checked. The individual checking the signatures needs to be 95% confident that the true proportion of valid signatures are estimated with, at most, a 2% margin of error. So, notice what's going on here. We don't know the sample size uh, that we would need, but we want to figure out what the sample size that would be needed to fit a certain, you know, procedure or a certain um, margin of error in a, in a certain situation. So 
what we need to play on here is that the margin of error is equal to z star times our p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. And what do we know? Well, we know the margin of error here is going to be 0 0.02, which is our 2%. And we know that if we have a 95% confidence interval, that gives us a Z star of 1.960. And if you haven't had, if you didn't have that memorized, remember we can always do our normal curve. We put 0 0.96 in the middle, sorry, 0 0.95 in the middle. And that's our area in here. And so what's left over is 0 0.025 on either side. And to calculate our Z star, it's the inverse norm of our tail. So the inverse norm of 0 0.025 gives us that 1.96. So in our formula here, we have 1.96 times uh, a proportion that we don't know. So we don't know what the proportion is, um, but we need to be able to estimate um, conservatively. So a conservative estimate for P hat would be a 50-50 estimate. And we're going to put that over n. Well, when we reverse everything and solve it, we get n is equal to, we would have to divide 0 0.02 by 1.96. Um, and then we're going to end up with, sorry, let me fix my math up here. I'm going to do a bunch of solving at once. Um, 0 0.02 divided by 1.96 uh, is equal to the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 over n. And if we stair step up this way, then we would square both sides. So over 1.96 squared uh, is equal to 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 over n. And so we would end up with n equals 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.02 over 1.96 squared. And so our N would end up being equal to 2,401 is the number of signatures that we would need. So we just had to work backwards algebraically to figure out what our sample size would be based on a certain confidence level of 95%, which gives us our Z star there. And then our conservative estimate, because we don't know the proportion is 0.5. So number two, if the activist group's previous petition, 85% of the signatures were valid. Using this value as a guess for p hat, find the sample size needed for a margin of error of at most two percentage points with 95% confidence. So now we know something else and we need to figure out a different piece of the puzzle. So we know that it's 85%. And so we're still going to have 1.96 because our Z star value for 95% confidence gives us 1.96. But instead of a conservative estimate like we had up here of 0.5 and 0.5, our estimate this time is going to be 0.85 times 0.15 over n again. And if we kind of extrapolate, not in a bad way, but out what's going on here, we'd end up with n is equal to 0 0.1275, which would be that 0 0.85 times 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.02 over 1.96 squared to give us an n equal to 122, 1224.51, or n is equal to 1225. How does it compare? It's smaller. So the sample size is much smaller. So we don't need as big a sample size when we have an estimate for p hat that is more accurate. So number three, uh, what if the company president demands 99% confidence instead of 95% confidence? Would this picture, would this require a smaller or larger sample size, assuming everything else remains the same? So if we have a smaller sample size, what's going to happen? Well, a smaller sample size, or sorry, a larger sample size is going to be, uh, mean you need to check more signatures, right? So if you want to be more sure, you have to check more signatures. Hmm. 
more signatures needed. All right, so if you want to be more sure, you need to check more signatures, okay? So to be more confident, you need to check more signatures. All right, so to review, we've got this four-step process. Our state, our state plan do conclude. And state plan do and conclude give us exactly what we've been talking about this whole time, right? So we state what, what we're parameter and competence level. We name our procedures, check conditions, general and specific formulas outlined, and interpret the interval and context. Then we sidestepped and said, when we don't know the sample size, we sometimes have to make a conservative estimate. So p hat is equal to 0.5 can be used for conservative estimates. Okay, so conservative estimates. And if n ends up as a decimal, we round up. Well, then we went down here and we said we know our margin of error, which is 0 0.02. We know a Z star for a 95% confident interval. And we made a conservative estimate at 0.5 and 0.5 divided by n. And we did some solving here, right? So that's all just algebra. Divide by 1.96, square both sides, divide by n, and then multiply, uh, or then and then divide by 0 0.02 over 1.96 squared. Same thing down here. All we changed was we didn't have a conservative estimate anymore. We actually had 85% as our estimated proportion. And so all that changed in this example was what we put into our standard deviation, or our standard error formula. Remember, this is our standard error of p hat formula. And then at the bottom, we talked about what it, the effect of sample sizes has on um, confidence level. So if we want a higher confidence level, we need to check more signatures. Okay, so that's the basics of estimating population proportion using this four step process. Uh, we will go into the four